one is the non-fiction favorites. I tend to like these ones more than the fiction favorites. I mean, because I really, really like reading non-fiction and memoirs. I read that book, The Hundred Years War in Palestine. I love it. I love seeing it stocked here. War against all Puerto Ricans. These all seem like really good books. I actually wanted to get this book by Angela Davis. Hey my love, so throughout this vlog, if you haven't noticed, the audio sometimes get really low because it's really busy inside the bookstore itself. But I'm just saying in this portion that I'm going to be reading the book that I picked out, which is Braiding Sweetgrass, after I read my current read, Lola Olufemi's Feminism Interrupted. So this is just me showcasing you, and yeah! So now we're walking to the Strand Bookstore. I didn't get anything from Barnes & Noble, which I'm really proud of because I already have way too many books on my TBR. So we're just walking. Very nice day today.
this book sounds so interesting and I find out that the author is Filipino. <gasps> like, come on. Convince me right now not to buy it. You guys are here because this is so tempting. Like, this is so tempting. I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> this is my first time ever seeing a fiction and translation table. It is so pretty. I've never heard of these books. At least I don't think so. I haven't seen all of them yet. But it is so, so beautiful. Hi my loves, I'm back in my room now. I did end up getting one thing from the Strand Bookstore, which is this learning Korean workbook. It teaches you how to speak, read, and write Korean. When I was younger, about 5th to 6th grade, I was self-teaching myself about as far as watching K-pop videos and YouTube videos could get you, which was pretty far, by the way. It was pretty good. Um, I kid for as a 5th grader, and I... And I did end up pursuing Korean on my first and second semester of college, but ultimately it and my relationship with Korean ended up lessening because I didn't have any Korean friends or Korean speaking clients or people that I would end up talking to on my job. Mostly everybody spoke Spanish and English, so that was just my daily routine that I was exposed to. So a lot of the things that I ended up learning in my Korean classes, I unlearned because I wasn't having that exposure every single day. But due to the new year coming up and just my interest in the Korean culture never fading, I wanted to end up relearning it again and hopefully mastering the language at some time. I'm not expecting myself to be some sort of Korean connoisseur at 2024, but it would still be really, really nice to be able to get in touch with the language again. I didn't lose everything. I still know a few of the sentence structure and the entire alphabet. It's just the actual grammar structure and formulating more eloquent sentences that I need a little bit more help with. So I'm hoping that this workbook gets me to do that. Um, I was really happy when I was at Barnes & Noble solely because I ended up reading up to page 95 of my current read, Feminism Interrupted by Lola Olufemi. I'm not going to get too into it uh, in this vlog, but just know that if you're looking for a book that will help radicalize or just give you a very refreshing but much needed take on the voices silenced by the feminism movement, which is supposed to be a movement designed to uplift those silenced voices, this is the one. And I genuinely, sincerely am saying that I really like it. Plus, it is a short read, so it's helping me get back into the flow of reading. I can't wait to have finished it as well, just because I'm so excited to finally be back at reading. And at the time that I'm filming this, it is December 30th, so Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.